Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. Today I'm going to let you look over my shoulder while we take apart one of these Inkbird Smart Home Smart Life Wi-Fi temperature controllers. So I'm hoping I'm going to stay in shot for the duration of this video. Excuse me if I wander out of frame a little bit. In fact, I might just zoom out just a touch for now. So these are extremely popular in the home brewing community and I can't say that uh, I don't understand why because who doesn't want the ability to control your temperatures of your fermenter or your conditioning tanks or your kegerator or even your children's bedroom from uh, somewhere remote like a beach in Barbados. So um, this isn't going to be a video about how to set up or tune or indeed operate an Inkbird. This particular model is an ITC 308 Wi-Fi. No, no. This is going to be about getting stuck in to the guts of this bad boy and having a look what makes it tick. So this is the controller. This is the box. We don't need that. So as you can see, it comes complete with power cord, which you'd expect, and two sockets, each denoted respectively, heating and cooling, so you know where to plug your dangly bits for your fridge and your heater. A thermo probe, I imagine this is some type of PT100. And of course, the sealed fitted plug with fuse installed. 13 amp, no doubt. Well, this is what we're here for. Let's start there. Is it indeed? <laughs> Good catch. My belly caught that off shot. You can't tell, can you? Is it indeed a 13 amp fuse? It looks like it. It's a tight fit, boys and girls. There we go. Yeah, 13 amps. Says it there in white and brown. So I'll stick that back on the fuse holder and we'll slide it back in. Now, is a 13 amp fuse the correct rating for this type of instrument? Well, let's have a look on the back and see exactly what it says. Maximum current, 10 amps. So, considering in the UK we tend to jump from 3 to 5 to 13, a 13 amp fuse would be fine in this particular model. Right, what I'm going to do first is get into the back of the handy dandy socket. Now, this here has a couple of mounting brackets on the back. Also says it's got a current rating of 10 amps on there as well. So you should be able to plug in a heater, uh, obviously not something like an oil filled radiator because they tend to run at around 12 to 13 amps if they have a 3 kilowatt element in them, of course depending on the rating or the, the voltage of your supply. So there we are, that's the four screws out the back. Conveniently I'll note, these are not security screws, but just normal screws, which I already like. Aha, so we're in. We've got the little shutter system to prevent your children electrocuting themselves. This pushes, it does go down the way. There we go. Works a treat. And same, yeah, they're all right. Nice, clear shutters, and on the inside, we do indeed have copper contacts. I'm already pulling everything out of position, but we'll get it back together, no problem, when we put it back together. So yeah, these include uh, little brass plates, copper contacts, Everything, to be fair, looks in order. 
I think if I can get that to sit in the right place, I might be able to just shove it back together now and save me wrecking it later on. Oh, it's already decided it's going to move, look. So this might have been a mistake, <laughs> coming to this bit so soon. Let's get you in there. Press down, there we are. Simply because I took that section out. Right. The wires are suitable. I wouldn't have said they're extremely thick. They look like 1 to 1.5 millimeter square. And looking at the connected terminals, it's, it's solder. It looks fine to me. I'm hoping that we're focused correctly on this because chances are we're not. I'm just going to turn the autofocus off to stop it bouncing up and down. Uh, yeah, it looks fine to me. Green and blue. Obviously, Chinese colours. So we've got green for the earth. We've got blue for what would appear to be, uh, let me think, green for the, blue for the neutral and yellow for the live. So, that's yes, quite new that. Oh, there's a, there is a brown as well. There's a brown which is going to be uh, are they switching the neutral on this? So you've got your fuse that side. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got live coming into both terminals and it looks like they're switching on the neutral. Which is odd, isn't it? Have I got that the right way round? No, they're not. I'm wrong. So it's yellow for neutral. Come on. Yellow for neutral. And then we've got blue and brown for the live. So one of them heating. We've got brown for the heating wire and blue for the cooling live feed. No, all the way around. Oh my god, I think you've tuned into the wrong channel, boys and girls. It's the other way around. Let's put the lid on this, just so it doesn't disappear everywhere. The reason it's easy to confuse yourself is, when you're looking at something like that, you're actually looking at a mirror image, of course. When you take the back off a plug, and you're working inside a plug fitting, then the fuse is the, is the left pin for the fuse live terminal and you turn it over it's the right pin isn't it so I'll just stick these four screws back in here that didn't take too long just eight minutes to look inside the back of that you ain't seen nothing yet because we're going to get in the back of the controller proper now so again another four screws in the main body the clamshell housing of the Inkbird ITC 308 ITC 308 Wi-Fi there's also a little QR code on the back there I would imagine that is for you to scan and take it to the instructions nothing in the back of the clamshell all of it is in the back in the front of the control unit. So we've got two relays here and they are, if I can just have a look, uh, 12 amp, 16 amp, uh, 277 volts, 20 amps at 100 and 20 something volts AC. It's difficult to see that. So if I just zoom in, maybe you can read that a little bit better at home than I could. You'll see it. it'll show up easier on there actually. And then uh, just make sure we don't lose those screws for later on because I'm going to be using this in the future. Uh, we've got a little transformer here which is probably supplying, I would imagine, 12 volt or 5 volt for the LCD display on the front or whatever kind of display it is. Let's see if we can pop this out. 
come on now. Just be kind. There we are. I think we're in. Okay, I've lost my screwdriver. So, tactile buttons on the front. Up, down, uh, heating and all that kind of stuff. Just got a little depressing tab on the inside there. And they work on these little switches. We've just got a matrix display kind of, uh, you know, what do they call them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven segment displays are they then? Or eight segment displays, something like that. We can see we've got plenty of tracking uh, solder to beef up the contacts for the live switching of the uh, of the relays and also there are some anti-tracking slots there to prevent any arcing and sparking and spitzing and farting and all that kind of stuff. Inkbird ITC 308 Wi-Fi all printed on the circuit board. We've got a couple of red and green indicator LEDs as well. Some anti-tracking just there next to the transformer to keep the low side away from the high side. And again, if we turn it back over, it's a very interesting little board. And all of this integrated circuitry is probably, considerably, out of my depth. This here is the little uh, kind of, what would you call it, piggyback board with the Wi-Fi chip on there. So that's doing the communication with your router at home and then we've got a little brain box here this chip I, my eyes are nowhere near good enough to see exactly what that says on there little buzzer to indicate when something's going right or something's going wrong and then plenty of control circuitry so I thought there might be a little bit more in there for us to look at in terms of uh, loose components not loose but single components but actually it's a very nicely laid out well thought out circuit board and it looks to me like Inkbird I've got their head screwed on with this all pick and place of course and uh, double side printed circuit board really really well put together very nicely done I'll just stick the autofocus back on again so we stay in shot I think that's as deep as we can go with this. Looks like there might be some pads here for fine tuning, maybe programming or something like that. Yeah, what an impressive circuit board. Also, it's nice to know if you do damage your probe, you can indeed disconnect it. There's a little Molex connector there, and the cable for that just tends to. Looks like it slots between these two relays. To hold it in place there we go very very well made I think when we get this wired up I'll be testing it out of course or uh, well, you can see there that the earth wire is just jumped across so that's good to see that we have proper earthing on here and we don't have a sleeved earth pin on the plug which is always a ridiculous thing so there we go well done Inkbird. I mean I've not plugged it in and programmed it yet but looking in here I already am taken by the quality of the workmanship and how this little controller is put together. There we go. I don't think there's much more I can say about it to be honest boys and girls but if you want to have a look inside well I've saved you a job haven't I? Uh, one thing I probably would say is if anything's going to fail on something like this it's probably going to be either the Wi-Fi chip or the relays and I would imagine the relays I imagine they're both replaceable to be fair but I would imagine the relays are more easily replaceable than the Wi-Fi chip although if you've got a steady hand and a fine tipped soldering iron I would imagine you could replace both. There we go. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.